we have our drawing panel and now it's time to make the first point. So I'm going to call it point. Now it's tempting to use P, P1, P2, things like that for points, but I'm going to make two points here and they're both going to serve very different purposes. So I'm going to call the uh, original point dot. Now this declares a variable uh, point, but it does not actually create it. And the way we do that, we can do it on the next line dot equals new point. Now, if you don't give it coordinates, the initial coordinates will be zero, zero. And let's go ahead. We already have the print point method here that takes a point. Let's go ahead and use that. and run this, we should see the printed, there it is, zero, zero for the point. And that's all we're gonna see. All right, how do we make those coordinates become random instead of just zero, zero? You could put some values in here, for example, 100, 200, that will give us a point with 100, 200 for the X and the Y, you see that right here, that's great. Uh, but I want that to be random. How do we do that? There's rand dot, so this is our random object. Uh, however, I don't think I actually created it. We declared it, but we never created the object. So, well, let's just have fun, create an exception, and then we'll go and fix it. So rand dot, you can see all the methods. Next int, right here, we're gonna use the one with the bound. Uh, don't worry about the word pseudo random. It just means that nothing's actually random. Uh, that's good enough definition for pseudo random for us right now. Uh, between zero and the specified value. So we could do 600 and this will give us an integer value between zero and 600. Let's call it int x equals. And let's move that down and then dot dot x equals x. All right, they may seem like they're the same to you, but remember this X right here is the X coordinate of the point called dot. So we're setting the X coordinate of the dot equal to this random integer value we just created. All right, perfect, no pointer exception. That's what I was expecting. Why is that? You can see where it happens right here. So what is happening, we're using the rand variable, however, and you can see it's this up here, but we never actually made a new random object. So in a similar way that we created a new point, we're gonna do the same thing for rand. And the class is random. All right, so we're initializing this with a new random object, and now we can use it here. So you can see the X coordinate is random between zero and 600. Uh, now maybe you made your window a different size, maybe it's not 600. So the window is called panel dot, oh look at this, at the top, why do these go, show up at the top? Because these are the four methods that return integers right here. And what I want to do, this is an X coordinate, so I wanna use get with. So I double click get with, and this will be the width of the panel, which I know I set to be 600. Uh, however, if I change it, this get with will return the actual width of the panel. If I leave 600 in and I change the width of the panel to 800, the X coordinate will still be random between zero and 600. This will create a random X value. You still need to create a random Y value, which is done in a really similar way, except you're basically just change all these to Y's and don't use get width because your window is probably not square. So your width is not gonna be the same as your height. And you wanna make sure that your Y coordinate is between zero and height. All right, let's separate these things out. This right here is part of the move randomly code. 
So what I'm going to do is copy it and somewhere down here, move to random location. All right, we're going to paste it in here, but we're going to have a slight problem because we still can access the rand object. That's the reason we made it a field is so I can access it everywhere. The difference is this point is now called P, not called dot. So there we go. That'll set the X coordinate of the point to whatever value we just created right here, whatever random value we just created. And if you watch the lecture videos, you know that when you change uh, an object's value inside a method, it changes the actual value of the object everywhere. So it's not going to revert back to the initial value. You do need to set the Y coordinate to be random in here. Now you might be wondering, why didn't I call it dot? Well, because later we're going to move not only the dot, but also the target to a random location. And I don't want to create two separate methods to achieve the same thing. So this just takes a point and both the dot and the target are both points. All right. So up here, we're going to delete this and oh, I already forgot what I called it. Move to random location. Now, if you put P in here, well, what is P? Well, P doesn't exist anywhere in main. What I actually want to send in is this point called dot. All right, last thing, do I need to give it initial coordinates if I'm just going to reset the location in here? No, this 100 and 200 is pretty useless. So I'm going to go ahead and delete it. So I'm going to make a new point. We saw that gives it zero, zero. This will move to random location. Notice your Y coordinate zero because I haven't touched the Y coordinate. All I did was set the X and you can close this, run it again. Make sure your X coordinate is changing. You could get lucky and see the same random value twice in a row, but it's pretty unlikely uh, for that to happen.